Today's Bible study is 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 through 16. And Peter once again addresses this passage to the beloved. We learn that the beloved are the pilgrims of the dispersion, which in all truthfulness reaches all the way back to the Old Testament times and the Israelites that have been dispersed from their homes and their homeland through their struggles and the trials in being God's chosen people. And yet closer to their hearts must have been the events of the martyrdom of Stephen in Acts chapter 6 verse 1 through chapter 8 verse 4. Peter gives instruction and guidance in that those of the beloved should not be concerned as to the trials they are facing, but that as Christ Jesus suffered, they should be rejoiceful to be included in the sufferings of Christ Jesus. We learn from Matthew 5, 11 through 12. And in Luke 6, 22 and 23 from the New King James Version, Jesus proclaims, and I wanted to share this with you as it directly relates to the suffering of, of the Christians in their relationship with Christ. Jesus says, Blessed are you when men hate you, and when they exclude you, and revile you, and cast out your name as evil. For the Son of Man's sake, rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for indeed your reward is great in heaven, for in like manner their fathers did to the prophets. In verse 14, Peter states once again, as he did in chapter 3, verse 14, that those who are persecuted for Christ's sake are blessed. He goes on to say that the spirit of glory and of God rest upon you. Peter says that those who are doing the persecuting are blaspheming God, but the beloved of God are, as his representatives in this world, bringing glory to God through the suffering that is endured by them, just as did Jesus suffer for our sins and bring glory to God. But Peter also goes a step further and defines the type of suffering that is glorifying to God and separates it from the suffering that one would endure from living in the sins of this world and then suffering for them as murderers, thieves, evildoers, or a busybody in other people's matters, as he describes in verse 15. In verse 16, Peter brings encouragement to those who suffer for Christ to not be ashamed, but that in doing so are bringing glory to God. This is an encouragement to those who suffer for Christ Jesus that by doing so are bringing glory to God. There is much suffering in the world today, but it is not just in third world countries. It is in our own country, city streets and neighborhoods. Many people refuse to believe in God because they want to be set free from suffering. And yet in passages like this, we learn that suffering is a part of being a Christian and taking a stand for Christ Jesus. If you are one of these people, I want you to know that we live in a sinful world. And the effects of sin will always be around us in this world. Jesus never promised to take suffering away from us in this world, but that he would be with us and guide us through the pain and suffering of this world through his indwelling of his Holy Spirit for all who will believe in him. As we learn from John 14 verses 15 through 18 verses 26 and 27 and in John chapter 15 verses 18 through 25 and many other places throughout Jesus' teaching. For all who believe in God and seek his will for their lives through salvation in Christ Jesus, a time will come when all suffering will cease, and backing in God's glory will be the event of eternity and a constant giving eternal praise to God and experiencing his eternal blessings will be all that exists. But until then, we will experience times of suffering in this world. But with Jesus by our side as our teacher, friend, and Lord, and with his Holy Spirit living within our hearts, being purified by him, and his sacrifice on the cross and victory and his resurrection from the grave, he will help us and guide us through the sufferings of this world and fill us with his blessings that, as we know from John 14, 6, are fulfilled in no other way. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. 
Dear Lord, it is hard for many people to grasp the concept of a God of love allowing so much suffering in this world. But please uh, help us to grasp the concept of this in a sinful world. And in a sinful world that we live, sin will exist. But through salvation in Jesus Christ, you have given us a way to be purified from the sin of this world and be a representative of Christ Jesus. And for so doing, you have promised to be with us and guide us through the sufferings of this world, through your Holy Spirit, that you promise to all who will believe in you and seek your will for our lives. Strengthen us, Lord, through your Holy Spirit and guide us through this sinful world to an everlasting glory and praise to you in heaven, where your blessings will be all that exist and all suffering will end in Christ. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.